Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, it's great to see you all back again here with us. Uh, Matty Pacheco, John Coleman, my partner. Uh, what could be better than the three of us with the one of him? <laughs> a, a great team. I think your other contributors might have something to say about that, but okay. <laughs> oh, no, they, that's true. They could be great, too. Okay. Manny, good to see you again. Sure. I, I, uh, I was watching, I, I don't know, on one of the old movie channels, I was, was watching a film with Jack Benny. It was mm. pre-World uh, pre War II, had to be 1939, 1940, whatever, but he was an actor uh, in Germany, and he uh, he got uh, somehow got I think it was Germany, uh, but he under, went underground to be a spy against the Nazis, and I thought it was a wonderful wonderful film. Right. But I was surprised because I don't know how many films Jack Benny ever made. He was really known for radio and television. Well, he was really known at that time for radio and vaudeville, and and radio. I don't think there was anybody better suited for radio than Jack Benny because he was definitely a, a tonal comedian. I mean, he it was based on everything you hear that he would do that was just, just fabulous. And he surrounded himself with just a, a great cast, you know, Phil Harris and 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 Don uh, 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 um, Dennis Day and, and, of course, his wife, Mary Livingston. And, and of course, Rochester. Oh, my gosh. So many, so many. Uh, Don Wilson, his, his announcer, they were all funny and they all were multi-talented. The movie you're, you're thinking about is To Have and Have Not. It was 1942. Uh, it was directed by the great Ernst Lubitsch, who was known for directing magnificent films like The Shop Around the Corner and The Merry Widow. But he kind of slummed and decided to do a comedy because it included two iconic stars, Jack Benny and Carol Lombard. What we didn't know then, and unfortunately what we came to find out later, was that Carol Lombard was going to go on a war bonds tour and that she never came home because her plane on the way home crashed into a Las Vegas mountain and she died at a relatively young age. And of course she was married to Clark Gable and that unfortunately uh, left him completely desperate for the rest of his life. But getting back to Jack Benny, he got to play uh, uh, not too many comedies. Uh, on television, he was good. But in film, um, he didn't do too much. Uh, I will tell you that he was kind of fun in George Washington Slept Here. But the, the real film that he's known for, and not in a good way, was The Horn Blows at Midnight. It was so panned and so reviled by critics that it was a source of comedic enterprise by Jack Benny for the rest of his career. Anytime oh, really? he wanted to be humbled by a guest or by one of the cast members, somehow the horn blows at midnight uh, seemed to come up to great <laughs> uproarious laughter because it was such a terrible comedy, a terrible movie. <laughs> and this is, this is according to Jack Benny. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because, uh, you know, I didn't realize, I, I was surprised to see him in even that one film, To Have and Have Not, and I didn't realize he did uh, even more than one. But, of course, I know him from television as a kid watching sure. the Jack Benny show. But you're right, his big career uh, was, start, I know he started in vaudeville, but he had a long radio career, which is, of course, probably why he got into the movies at all. Well, kind of, right. Kind of interesting. John remembers him in one movie. I don't remember in any movie. When we started talking about Jack Benny, I said, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> let me just say that you might have remembered him in one movie, Art. And it was just a cameo. He only appears for a couple of seconds. But he was also in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Mm. And uh, wow. he only comes up for a second. Same like Jerry Lewis. They, they, they're not even credited. It's just a walk-on cameo that was actually going to be given to Bob Hope. But something came up. Bob Hope couldn't do it. And so instead, Jack Benny stepped in to, uh, to play the part of the, uh, of the, 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 the traveling uh, salesman or the, pass, uh, the, 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 the person in the car just traveling by. And he yeah. gets knocked down by, uh, verbally knocked down by Ethel Merman. And that's where he comes up with that iconic, well. <laughs> and then he moves yeah. on. So Jack Benny was in that movie, and of course everybody was in that movie. Everybody except yeah, Don yeah. Rickles, who never who never got over it. But that's okay. 
<laughs> but Jack Benny, you know, Jack Benny didn't need the movies. Um, the, the way Bob Hope really did, because he was really a standout at Paramount. Um, Jack Benny was, was really a product of radio. Television was always an experiment. He, he did it in a very unique way. He would present a live stage introduction, presumably in front of an audience. There was no audience there. Uh, whenever you heard that sound, it was a laugh track or, or, or an audience track. And then he would insert it into whatever that was going to go on after the after the stage monologue, shall we say, kind of like a Johnny Carson monologue. And then he would go back home and, and, and live his normal life, a la the way Seinfeld would go home and, you know, be surrounded by crazies. So yeah. um, Jack Benny was... Um, was a, a a person who did not like working in front of people, even though he got his break in vaudeville, but he got very comfortable with radio. And so he was going to do television his way, as opposed to, let's say, Carol Burnett, who does it exactly opposite. Not only does she, you know, perform in front of a, a an audience on her television show, she asks the audience to provide questions for her, and that, that provided the source of comedy. I mean, so, I mean, in many ways, Jack Benny was the antithesis of what, what Carol Burnett, Red Skelton, Jackie Gleason, uh, Dean Martin. I mean, all of these great variety shows. Laughing was another great example. So uh, Jack Benny was just, I mean, for somebody who was doing a, a kind of a variety comedy, it's amazing to me that he wouldn't perform in front of an audience, but gave the illusion that he was in front of an audience. Uh, well, question he did about it. Jack Benny. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, did he ever? Uh, could he actually play the, the violin besides uh, three or four things? Did he ever do anything professionally with it? Let's say for charity or uh, as a real performance. To the best of your knowledge, he was an accomplished violinist. Really, he was very good, and he and he offered concerts throughout his career. Uh, but his comedy on television and radio was that he could not play the violin, and he really had an expertise of really mangling whatever piece he was going to do. But truth be told, he was accomplished as a violinist, the same way that Johnny Carson was accomplished as a drummer. So, <laughs> And they were both very good. It's just that we don't know them for that because their comedy was so prolific. Mm. So, John, you had a question? Um, no, I just said Jack Benny was so successful um, at what he did and the way he did it that it doesn't matter to me whether he w was in front of an audience or not. I yeah, and, and you know, getting back to the original premise of what you provided, John, he was going to do one more movie and it would have been magnificent. Not to say that the, the replacement wasn't, but he was slated to do The Sunshine Boys, the Neil Simon piece opposite Walter Matthau. Hmm, he was wow. going to be in that movie and it would have been terrific. The two of them would have been just absolutely insanely funny. But unfortunately, yes. um, Jack Benny, prior to production starting, died of cancer. And oh. so out of deference to Jack, his longtime, dear, sweet, loving friend, George Burns, stepped in for Jack to play the role, obviously a more, you know, uh, straight man role. But for his performance... George Burns earned an Academy Award. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean... Well, that's, it's, that's, it's, another, that's another video, is the friendship of Burns and Jack Benny. Right. And you know, one other thing, just to, to, to tie this all together, To Be or Not To Be was then remade uh, in the 19, early 1980s, and uh, playing the parts of, of Carol Lombard and Jack Benny were Mel Brooks and his wife, Anne Bancroft. Mm. Oh, that's funny. Not, yeah. not as good a film. It's, it's mildly funny. It's, it's cute. I'll say it's yeah. cute. But now, it's I, I want to correct something. At the beginning, I think you misspoke. And you said the film that I was talking about was to have or have not. No, no, but to be or not to be. To be or not to be. Okay. Did mm. I say to have or have not? Oh, my gosh. I no. think so. But I don't, hey, that was 20 minutes ago. Well, what do to, I know? Well, oh, you know what? We'll have to go back and uh, look at the tape. Well, yeah. you may have to do that. But yes, it's To Be or Not To Be, and it's just a, a just a fabulous film. And then, of course, it was so fabulous, it was remade, and it, was, it wasn't as good. Although, I will tell you that when, after Jack Benny died, the, the funniest man alive today now remains Mel Brooks. So, I mean, he mm. inherited that mantle as far as I'm concerned. So it, it would be it would be obvious that Mel Brooks would take on the Jack Benny role, but 
to be or not to be is so iconic in 1942, and the director was so good. You know, Mel Brooks's director usually is Mel Brooks. So, you know. <laughs> and he's a good director, too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, Mel Brooks is great, but he's no Ernst Lubitsch. So. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, true. Ernst. Anyway, thank you, Manny, for a, a trip back to the, the uh, little-known filmography of Jack Benny. Very small filmography. Yeah, but I, I still, I loved it. You bet. Thank you, guys. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.